This one may be hopeless. I don't know. But this is moss. I need to spray it and kill it, but I'm over here right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna rough this thing up pretty good with the aerator. And that's just a start, dog. That's just a start. I'm gonna go ham on it. We'll check back in on this one later. <laughs> What's going on guys? It's Master Horticulturalist and YouTube superstar Paul Outlaw here. I got like 15 subscribers, you can't mess with me. It's just exciting for people at home, I'm sure. Nobody watches this crap anyway. Everybody, please go subscribe to Paul's Prime Cuts on YouTube. He's getting up there on the subscriber count. Pretty successful smoke down on this one he wanted to preserve. His centipede spots. So we keep those in there. We'll plug it out. All right, out here we're gonna do a little uh, rye grass because they they want it. But I I I hate annual rye grass. But uh, you got to cover up some of this stuff. I did a Celsius application out here about a month ago. You can see those spots right there. It. Uh, this is a uh, centipede up on this front part of this. This is the entrance to a neighborhood subdivision. But then I got those little narrow strips like that back there that go on for about, uh, I don't know, I'm not good with distance, maybe 2,000 feet each way, pretty long. But uh, anyway, and they're Bermuda. So I would prefer to overseed if I'm gonna have to use ryegrass with perennial ryegrass because it's so much easier to mow and the appearance is so much better but it's really rough on something like this uh, centipede to uh, overseed it with perennial ryegrass and you definitely would want to uh, spray that out the first signs of spring with uh, some uh, metzofuron or any kind of sulfonyl urea katana but uh, I, I just I don't do that to uh, centipede grass as far as uh, perennial ryegrass I don't really recommend annual ryegrass either but I have uh, I have chunked this thing up pretty bad and I don't want it. They, they want it overseed to look good during the winter. But anyway, it looks okay during the winter. But uh, anyway, I got my neighbor's draggy tine rake thing and I'm just gonna scar this up. I didn't uh, I didn't pack up my aerator cause I'm doing mainly mowing today. So I got all three mowers on the trailer, not important. But anyway, there's another section down here where we had some hurricane calamity. And that's another reason I need to go ahead and get it seeded. But I'll show you, we'll check it out. Here's the other thing I got going on here. That's quite an oak tree. And that was apparently quite a branch. Came down across here and here. I don't know what the city used to pick this thing up with, but they took all my grass with them. But it, look, it even, whatever it was, even got curbed them. But I, I can't. I can't do anything about the the uh, missing turf right now. <laughs> I'm gonna try to smooth this out a little bit and uh, go ahead and put the ryegrass out here. Scuff the ground all up with that pine rake thing, and that's probably plenty sufficient for just ryegrass, just a temporary grass. I'm not crazy concerned about how great it goes, but uh, I don't love aerating centipede this late in the year it's october and uh the i don't know i just feel like that it doesn't uh have time to really grow back in and recover but it, it probably would be fine but uh, you never know when we'll get a frost this is the annual ryegrass we're going to use this is just what the uh 
nursery had here. Let's see, let me see that. Oh, 0.21% weed seed. That's always nice. This is gulf ryegrass. Anyway, it's just a winter cover. Uh, like I said, just uh, if you if you use it, you got to know that it is a pain in the butt to mow in the uh, springtime because it it grows fast and furious, holds a ton of moisture, so it, it just it it, it turns to uh, vegetable juice when you hit it with your lawnmower and gets all stuck up under there and wads up under the deck. So I don't I don't love to use it as you can tell. <laughs> some pretty okay centipede there. I hate to put this ryegrass in it, but oh well. Say we'll be green for the winter anyway. Okay, I got the ryegrass out at the front of the subdivision. Um, I just, like I showed you, I just kind of scraped up the ground to get a little seed to soil contact. And uh, I put a hundred pounds out there. Uh, I, I just don't get too technical when it comes to ryegrass. I just throw it out. I also put a starter on it, the same starter I was using for my fescue because I had a couple of jugs of that left over, so I'm still using that up. Anyway, got that done. A little bit about ryegrass. Uh, perennial ryegrass looks great. It's really good for overseeding uh, Bermuda mainly. Uh, keep in mind, in this part of the country I'm in, um, perennial ryegrass will not survive the summer. The thing about perennial ryegrass is you want to be sure to spray it out of the lawn when the temperatures start getting warm because it has an allopathic effect and it will kill your favorable turf. I've seen it done. If you don't believe me, I've got a, uh, one of my videos shows a St. Augustine yard where another company put, uh, perennial ryegrass in it and never sprayed it out and the hotter it got the more stressed out the ryegrass became the more it started to poison off its competition and it just totally destroyed that yard they ended up having to sod it we tried a lot to save it but long anyway different story <laughs> all right but uh the perennial ryegrass looks great it's easy to mow and uh fertilize it fantastic color so if you've got a bermuda yard uh, it's, it's an option for you if you want to go through the hassle. Just be sure to spray it out. Um, the uh, annual ryegrass, you can get a decent color in it if you fertilize it a couple times. The uh, the drawback to that stuff is it's it's really spindly and you know it's like uh, a bad hairdo or something. And it is a I just it's just a nightmare to cut but if you've got some that you've worked on and fertilized up and you've got it looking good it is tough to cut in the spring because it just it just liquefies when you cut it and sticks to your mower deck and clogs it all up clumps it's a pain a pain a pain i'm telling you but anyway it's gonna it's gonna look good up there i put i did i told you i put a starter on i, I repeat myself anyway it's the i've mowed this place and put ryegrass on it and fertilized it for yeah, about 12 years. This is the first year they've asked me to do anything about weed control here. So you saw where I had sprayed it and uh, just a tremendous amount of junk in it that, that it that it killed out. So we got some some work to do here to get that turf right for next season. Uh, but that's that's a whole another story. But obviously uh, we're gonna pre-emergent that in the uh, in January February. So. All right, we're gonna go back here. I got a Zerusia yard to mow, and uh, also gonna put pre-emergent on that. Um, it's October already here, but uh, the soil temperature is still way up. We're well within the range of before winter weeds are germinating, so I'm gonna put my fall pre-emergent on back here and use prodiamine. Stay. <laughs>
Okay, the old walker cuts a pretty mean yard, but this is the byproduct of that. Each one of those bags represents a hopper full of grass, and that's a big bag of grass. That's uh, four bags right there. Yeah, this customer came out to me, and uh, he said, I was watching a little uh, yard stuff on YouTube. I, oh, I didn't know normal people watch yard stuff on YouTube. I didn't say anything, but he said, I thought, here it comes, man. He's going to say he saw Paul's prime cuts and it was great or something. But no, he said, I saw this guy called the lawn care nut. Uh, at least he watched a good one. But he said, and he was uh, talking about this stuff called RGS. Do you think I should put that on the yard? And I said, man, we've already put RGS on the yard twice every time it got fertilized. But the RGS is doing a good job. Lawn care nut is doing a good job getting the word out there. But... He didn't see Paul's prime cuts. Oh well. But if he comes asking me for super juice and blue lawn dye, I know it's time to cut him loose. I'm getting ready to, uh, I got it mowed. I'm getting ready to mix up uh, some prodiamine and do my fall pre-emergent on this yard. Like I said, it's October, but we still got some, uh, it's still been warm, it hasn't been cool at all. Today's actually the first cool day we've had, well, cooler day but anyway i don't out of the soil temperatures are fine we're going to go down with this fall pre merger going to put for diamine out um i want the complete app to be right at about a pound per acre so i am going to split it but i'm going to try to get three quarters of a pound per acre on this one maybe a little less and then do a, a clean up back up second app here a little later in about a month or so all right, like I said before, I'm, I'm adverse to uh, putting out more than one thing, uh, just one thing at a time. So I'm gonna put some seaweed, some prodiamine, and some microamp on this one. Got it agitating, recirculating, whatever you wanna call it in. in a yard that you just seeded. There a tree fall in it in the hurricane. Our branch on it. Oh, hell, there it is. There. Oh, well. All right, get to cleaning up. And I'll see if I can fix that spot. All right, a little storm clean up with the walker. It's looking way better, but I, I wouldn't have generally got on this this soon after uh, overseeding. It's been two weeks, I think, but uh, I can't leave him like this. I might have to get some dirt to fix some of those holes over there that the limb made, and I got plenty of seed. I'll fix her up. Okay, got everything cleaned up. That's kind of been the uh, order of the second half of the week here. We've just been cleaning up uh, storm damage and limbs and stuff. I did go ahead and blow that sawdust out of the uh, spot where that uh, tree had fallen over there. Over there. Uh, grass does not dig sawdust, so be sure if you have a similar situation to get that sawdust out of there. And I went ahead and threw down some more top choice in that spot to kind of cover it up. I'm going to need a little dirt to fill up the hole, but I'll get to that later. Anyway, that's what I've had going on this week. First part of the week was uh, finishing up my fescue seeding. I still got a little bit of ryegrass to throw out a couple places. Again, I'm not a huge fan of the ryegrass, but doesn't matter what I'm a fan of. <laughs> All right, but anyway, I'm gonna wrap up now. Um, you guys be sure to check out The Real Low Dad on the YouTubes. He's got him a new iPhone and he's excited to get some new content cranked out for you with his new iPhone, The Real Low Dad on the YouTubes. Check him out. Anyway, man, the, uh, the street lights are on. I don't know if you can see any over there. And my dad always said, when the street lights come on, it's time to get your ass to the house. I'll see y'all.